Hi, I'm Gavin, and these are the Coffee Conspiracies. This is the first episode of my visit to Merthyr Tydfil, situated in the foothills of the magnificent Brecon Beacons National Park. Wales was once the centre of the world's iron and steel industries, and Merthyr Tydfil its burning core. At its peak in the mid-19th century, Merthyr had the most productive ironworks in the world and was the most populous district in the country. With the end of the Second World War, the UK's industrial dominance faded, and Wales went into economic decline. In 1987, after 228 years of continuous production, the last iron foundry in Merthyr closed. I haven't researched this, and knowing the whys of historical economic decline is not the purpose of this series anyway, but many cities have navigated their way from post-industrialization. There is not always a clear path. Mostly, though, it involves accepting what is, and answering the question of what next. Turning inward and clinging onto the past is not a particularly useful response. Communities who look to the future have a better chance if they have something else to draw on when whatever generated that initial success loses its luster. Towns with a strong academic tradition and reputable universities can improve productivity and simply go up the value chain. Others can take advantage of their proximity to new markets or as an entrepot for immigrants, or as a tourism gateway. Merthyr Tydfil has suffered a great deal as it sought a way back to prosperity and opportunity, and I believe it is finding a new path. This is the overview for the Merthyr Tydfil local authority, and you can see that employment lags the national average by about 7%, and commercial vacancies are about 4% more than the national average. Salaries are lower than average, but business efficiency is a touch higher than average, with typical profit margins being astonishingly high. There's a specific reason for that, and it has something to do with the types of businesses being attracted to Merthyr. As with other towns suffering from economic difficulties, Merthyr has restructured its city centre, there's a shopping centre right at the railway station, and another at the bus station. Others are scattered within walking distance along the spine of the town. And yet, this hasn't created the usual commercial desert one finds in other towns. Part of this is the luck of geography, and part of this is clever design. First, geography. The Welsh valleys are a spectacular thing of beauty, and the train journey from Cardiff travels along the River Taff through tiny villages opening up on consecutively beautiful panoramas. These valleys push the towns into narrow corridors and the highways have been located further up and away where it was easier to build. The town of Merthyr Tydfil is hedged within a series of hideways making up a sort of triangular ring road. This is also the end of the line for the railway. Instead of splitting the town in two, the railway line instead funnels people leaving the station through a shopping centre and straight into the high street. If you live in a particular town, deciding whether to open your business there is different from when you don't, and I will usually be looking at places I visit as an outsider, because that's what I am. That means understanding what it may be like to live in a place is as important as the business considerations you may have. If you're ready to risk dropping 50,000 to half a million pounds on a business, then you should also be prepared to move to a place that satisfies your lifestyle interests. There needs to be something for you to come home to. Merthyr is not going to offer you the latest in cutting-edge dining or experimental theatre. What it will offer you is some of the most approachable walking, siking, climbing and freshwater kayaking anywhere in the country. And all of this only an hour from Cardiff. You can rent a three-bedroom home for £500 a month, and within a short stroll to your place of work. Now, on to the reason for this episode, office space. Office-based businesses make up about a quarter of the Merthyr economy, and there are very few vacancies. Partially this is because of how easy it is to convert empty offices into apartments, and partially it is because Merthyr was not historically where one opened an office. Those that do exist are clustered very close to the railway station in the centre of town. These also happen to be some of the older, least redeveloped offices. Rental averages are not especially cheap, and it seems that the latest rental valuations have seen Merthyr being one of the very few places in Wales where rates actually rose. That said, look at the efficiency and profit margin. That's fairly epic in comparison to elsewhere in the UK. I'm guessing wildly here, but I believe I may have an inkling as to why. Merthyr has a very sophisticated and highly engaged enterprise development team based at the Merthyr Tydfil Enterprise Centre and in the very modern Orbit Centre. You'll find a host of high-end businesses based there, as well as a great deal of investment on the part of the local authority into attracting and sustaining new businesses. And they're doing an incredible job. 
Mobile phone operator EE has almost a thousand people working in a modern call center alongside a large Welsh government administrative building. Other companies, such as Belfort BT, which is a construction firm, Capita, which does personal independence assessments, and General Dynamics, an aerospace and defense firm, have regional offices in Merthyr. This brings a lot of professional jobs in companies that book a great deal of revenue, and this is an outsized proportion to overall economic activity in the area. In other words, your personal experience will probably not be 40% margins. I chose Old Warehouse in Castle Street, just off the High Street, with a range of offices available from 10 to 1,000 square meters. The building is not ultra-modern, and you would need to discuss with the landlord the availability of broadband and any other services you may require. It's close to all the shops and restaurants of the city centre, and given the compactness of the town, also close to wherever you choose to live. For the office I selected, you'd be looking at about £1,186 per year for 20 square metres, which should be space for two people to launch your software development or IT firm. This is the listing on Zoopla. And as always, links and references will be below in the video commentary. And now a punt for the economic development team at the Merthyr Tidfull. Do contact them. There are two reasons to do so. The first is that they can help you with your lease and rates, potentially negotiating you a significant reduction over the term of your contract. They also have a program called the Meanwhile Project, which aims to support business startups, including helping secure finance. The second reason is because they also arrange a meet the buyer events. There are quite a few big new investments coming, from the General Dynamics manufacturing plant to Trago Mills opening a new and enormous discount retailer. These companies are looking to secure service providers of all types who are nearby. They'll need everything from artisans to designers to specialist consultants and software support. Maybe you're not ready to leap at Merthyr just yet, but go to one of these events and see if there are opportunities for you. It's fantastic to see so much development taking place, and there will be opportunities for new types of professional services. I recommend a visit. In the next episode, I'll be discussing opportunities in retail in Merthyr. Until then, let's go get some coffee.